Hi, in the last session, we talked about the spectrum allocation in 5G NR. We also discussed about some of the concepts in 5G NR like carrier aggregation, bandwidth part, which are important for optimizing the 5G performance and network efficiency. Now, in this session, we will be talking about dual connectivity concept in 5G NR. Dual connectivity is a feature that enhances the performance and the reliability of the modern wireless networks. Consider a scenario where a 4G e node B is providing the main coverage for a user device. And at the same time, the UE can also connect to a nearby 5G G node B coverage. If the UE only connects to the 4G e node B, then it can have the benefit of better coverage, but the data rates would be relatively low. And if the UE only connects to the 5G G node B, then it can enjoy the faster data rates, but at the same time, it may experience weaker coverage or frequent handovers due to more limited coverage of 5G signals, especially on the higher bands. Now, if you look at the protocol stack, then you will notice two types of data barriers. The MCG barrier from the primary node and the SCG barrier from the secondary node. MCG stands for master cell group and SCG refers to the secondary cell group. Another important concept is split barrier. In case of split barrier, one of the node forwards the data plane packets to the another node over to the X2 interface and later the data is combined at the PDCP layer before it reaches to the core network. The split barriers can be terminated at either the primary node or secondary node. It depends on the network configuration. It is important to note that for split barriers, it is generally preferred and recommended that the primary node and the secondary node are co-located because there would be a significant amount of data transfer needs to be routed over the X2 interface. If you remember, we discussed about the option 3 during the 5G deployment option session. So option 3 refers to the dual connectivity between 5G NR and 4G LTE using a 4G core network. You can see this in the center architecture in this picture here. Now if the user plane data is split between the MCG and SCG then it is known as option 3A. If the user plane is handled only through the MCG, this configuration is referred as option 3. And if the user plane data is managed by the SCG, it identifies as option 3x. So you can see in the center architecture for option 3, user plane data is routed from EPC to E node B and then portion of data is routed to G node B. And then both E node B and G node B sends this user plane data to the UE simultaneously. And later UE will combine these all data received from different nodes. So this is option 3. Now coming to the option 3A in the left architecture. This is option 3A. So here control plane data is handled by E node B. But user plane data is directly routed to the G node B from SCG. Now it is not routed by the E node B. So one stream coming directly from EPC to E node B. And second stream directly coming from EPC to G node B. Then they are sending data to the UE simultaneously over the air. Now coming to the option 3x in the right architecture. So this is similar to the option 3. But here is a small difference. Now first the user plane data is routed from EPC to G node B. And then one stream is transmitted to the UE from this G node B. And second stream is routed to the E node B and then E node B will transmit that stream towards the UE. Dual connectivity offers multiple benefits to improve network performance and user experience. With dual connectivity, the UE connects to the both nodes at the same time. So it has fast and efficient load balancing across the network. NR coverage from the millimeter wave bands may be inconsistent due to its bad propagation characteristics. So in such scenarios, Dual connectivity can enhance the mobility and robustness of the network and can ensure more stable connections, even in challenging environments. In addition, dual connectivity can help to accomplish higher data rates and per user throughput because it can use both the radio access technologies at the same time. 
Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you are pretty much familiar now with the dual connectivity concept. In the next session, we will be talking about 5G flexible numerology. So stay tuned for the updates. If you did not subscribe till now, then please subscribe to learn and grow community for regular updates. If this video is informative, then please like this video, comment on video and don't forget to share. Thank you for watching.